title of this sermon is Dominion. Dominion. You notice all caps? Yeah. It's that important. Yeah. In fact, if you look around on the net, you're going to find that this word is out there. Even in the uh, the health thing we were watching you know, a couple months back, it was called Dominion. And there's a movie called Dominion. And even the Roman Catholic theology has something called Dominion Theology. So Dominion is out there. It's amazing that it's coming more and more in the front. I'm seeing this word more and more. And then as I was reading Genesis, the Lord showed me the importance of this word. Let's see this works. What do you guys see there? The world. And what is it on? It's on fire. Is it going this way or is it going back the other way? How is your mind? Is it being destroyed or is it being rebuilt? I look at that in two ways. But first, let's take a look at these things. If you have your Bibles, you can turn to Genesis 1. Because this is a part of the scripture reading. I know Adela uh, read verse 27 for me, and that's all she was going to read. But I want to read verse 26 to 28, okay? And I truly want to thank my sister Adela for reading that. It's uh, great to see the children. So, if you have Genesis 1, 26, let me know when you get there by saying amen. Not just on the screen, but also in your hands. Amen. Okay? And it says, And God said, Let us make man in our image. after our likeness. likeness, and let them have dominion. dominion. Notice this. Over the fish of the sea. And over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over how much? All the earth. All the earth. And over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. them. Verse 28. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, be what? Fruitful. Be fruitful and multiply, multiply and replenish or fill the earth. And what? Subdue it. Subdue it and have dominion. dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. So when God created man, how much did he give him dominion over? Oh. Everything. There was nothing that was not under man's feet. And there it is. God created man and created woman and gave them dominion over the beauty of all things that he had created. Isn't that fantastic? belonged to God, but he gave the dominion to man as a good steward. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. As I was doing the study, I kept going from Genesis 1 to Genesis 2 to Genesis 3. I kept going all the way to Genesis 6. I'm like, Lord, this sermon's going to be way too long. Because there's so much that's in there that's in this message. And as I studied it, I'm like, Will the people be tired of hearing Genesis? You know, I preach Genesis. And Pastor Keeley preaches Genesis. And some of the elders preach Genesis. But you know what? You can study Genesis for eternity and not get everything out of it. Amen. You can read that same verse and the Holy Spirit will connect new verses to your mind for the situation that you're in in the life, in that present moment. You can read Genesis over and over again and it will never, ever be tired. If you're tired of Genesis, you can ask yourself, oh, what's wrong with my heart? Why am I not listening to you? Because... His mercies are new every day. So I hope you don't get tired of Genesis. Genesis, man, beautiful beginning. So like the garden we have, beautiful rainbows and the trees and the green things that God had created. And it says, and thus the heavens and the earth were finished. And were finished. Does that include man? He was finished, right? And all the hosts of them, all the things that man had control over. Look at this. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because that in it he had rested from how much? All, All his work, which God created the name. Does that include man? Yes. yes. Most especially man. And there you have the garden and the tree of life, as some artist has pictured it. Just a big tree. I love trees. You guys love trees? Watch that. We're going to take a closer look at the sixth day because there's something important in there. So it says, And the Lord God did what? Before man. man of what? Dust. The, dust the, the dust of the what? Ground. Dust of the ground. That's important. And it says, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Verse 7. Look at this. He creates man of the dust, right? Of the very ground. So what are you made of? Dust. Made of dust. So Adam was formed from the dust, a symbol of humility. humility. Is dust high exalted in the heavens, or is it low to the ground? Low. It's low to the ground. Lowliness of mind. mind and heart, because his very heart is made of the dust. It was a symbol of the character of what man was to be under God. He was to be submitted to his maker. maker. 
a symbol that God can take of the dust, the most base thing, and do what? Exalted. Exalted. Whereas Lucifer began in the highest. highest seat. He was next to God, right? He began with the highest seat, like the Pharisees, the high seats. Through pride, self-exaltation fell away. So That's why God said you're going to eat the dust. What do you want to be? Do you want to be in the highest seat? Or do you want God to exalt you there from the dust? He can take humility and exalt it in his own character. Lucifer didn't want that anymore. We're going to be talking about dominion, what it really means. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. Beautiful garden. You know what the new heavens and the new earth is going to be like? Beautiful rivers, beautiful trees. Imagine the smell of the flowers and the fruits. The things are the birds and the sounds and the song. We don't really understand what heaven's going to be like because we don't imagine it. Our mind is on the things of earth and the things of this. We imagine all of that. The hardship, like the coronavirus, and the degradation, and the sin. Focus on this. This is your goal. All this other stuff is going to pass away. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden. And the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And so we have this great green tree. The Spirit of God says that it has a fruit like gold and silver. So we have the two trees in the midst of the garden. Because even the tree of knowledge of good and evil wasn't evil looking. It says it was pleasant to the sight, right? Beautiful trees. And a river went out of Eden to water the garden. And from thence it was parted and became into four, four, heads. Heads. four heads. And there's a lot, a lot of study of this, but I'm going to just briefly touch on it. Notice, just as Jesus said of the inward Four garden heads. coming out from the ground, the rock, which was to always flow what? Outward, Outward right? You to what? You feed, feed others with love. Because he said, Whosoever drink of the water that I shall give him shall never what? Thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well, well of water doing what? Spring. Springing up into everlasting life. So just as the garden, the water wasn't coming from some external source, it came from up in the ground and fed the garden and then fed the rest of the world. So as a Christian, it should be swelling up in us, spilling out of our mouth, our lives, our actions, into every part of the earth, into four heads. It's universal. It should be everywhere. Your heart is to be that garden. Can you forward me one, brother, please? So it says, the name of the first is Pison, that which encompasses the whole land of Havilah, where there is gold. It's talking about something about Eden and the external part of it. It says, this is the gold of what? Faith. Faith and love. So God created external things to show what was to be in the heart, right? In the mind, right here. The trial of your faith being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the grave of Jesus Christ. The gold in the ground, there was gold everywhere, and precious stones and gems. It was telling you something about the character of God, something that was to be in the inward heart. Gold of faith and love, so that everywhere that Adam looked, it would be a reminder of, yeah, faith and love. I'm having, I'm having trouble, brother. You might have to keep boarding me. I'm not sure what's up. It says, the gold of faith and love, whom you having not seen. Has anybody seen Jesus in the flesh? No. no? But you what? No. You love. And whom though now you see him not, yet believing, you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. First Peter 1 Peter 1.8. If you have to restart it, just let me know, okay? Oh, let me go up. And the goal of that land is? Good. Good. So it's telling you something about that faith. It's telling you something about that love. What was it? It is? <clears throat> Remember, God said it was even very good. There is delium and the onyx stone. Watch this. The delium is the color of? Anna, which is a symbol of what? Word of God. The word of God. So not only was there this river welling up, outside were this gold and the delium stones and onyx stones telling you something. The coriander seed, the color thereof is the color of delium. Onyx, the symbol of the names of the children of Israel or God. Those like in character. Notice this. On the high priest was the what? Onyx, onyx, onyx stones. Grave on them. Right on them. The what? The names of the children of Israel. That way, everywhere that Adam looked, he knew that he was a child of God. The onyx stones was telling him something about his own character and about the character of God and what he was to be like. Remember, Adam had dominion over all of it. 
And the name of the second river is Gihon, the same as that which compasses the whole land of Ethiopia. There's more in there, but I didn't have time to put it into this sermon. And the name of the third river is Hittifel, which is that goes toward the east of Assyria. And the fourth river is Euphrates. So, rivers of water. Are you looking to rivers of water, running over, spilling over to your name and the rest of the land? You should be. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the... Notice, it's not just a physical place. There's actually a mindset that goes in the garden. You don't just in a garden, you have to have the mindset of what a garden is, what you're supposed to do in the garden. The outward garden was merely the symbol outwardly of what was to be in his mind and in his heart always. The tree of life wasn't supposed to be merely external, it was supposed to be in here. The caretaking of those things, because God gave it to him as a gift, right? As a gift, right? Yeah. Like salvation, is salvation a gift? Yeah. And then you're to put it on and take care of it, right? You're going to be the steward of what God has given you in salvation. Again, the character. So we put him into the garden. So think, God's going to put you into the garden mindset. To dress and to keep it. You want to put on that garden mindset. Eden was to be that outward expression of the inward garden that God had made of man's heart. Song of Solomon 5.1. It's like my spouse. It's like a garden that I enter into. And if you're like his spouse, married to Jesus, doesn't God want to walk in your garden? He wants to walk in us. That God was to how much? All the way, which means all the way, and all ways, which means all the time. Just to walk in. I'm having another issue, brother. If you like, if you click off of it, it's gonna not make me uh, go forward. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, "Of every tree of the garden, thou mayest what? Freely, Freely eat." For me again, please. You guys should be praying for me and praying for the sermon. I'm telling you, the devil hates our fellowship. Sure. Hates this. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt what? Surely, Surely die. die. So God gave man dominion over everything, but there was one thing he wasn't allowed to touch, right? Right? Yes. The Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him what? Help, help, help me. Because remember, talking about the image of God, man and woman together. And out of the ground, notice this. The Lord God formed how many? Every beast, every beast of the field and, and every out there. Man. Notice this, because he did it on the previous day, day five, right? And day six before he made man. Now he made man, and now he's doing it again to show that God has the power to create before man. Yes? Because Adam didn't see anything made. But now we've seen things made. So God brought them to who? Uh-huh. To see what? Because he got dominion, right? He has dominion, right? Therefore, he gets to name it. Whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was Negro. He was so in tune with God that when Adam named it, he studied it out and said, yes, this is what this is. That God didn't change his mind on anything. He said, no, Adam, that's not right, the name. Whatever Adam named it, that was the name there. So in tune with God that he could understand what God's will and mind was for that thing to be named. And everything that has a name has a character, doesn't it? And Adam gave names to how much? All cattle, to the fowl of the air, to every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found a help me for him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib, which the Lord God had taken from man, made he a? And brought her unto? Man. Remember, he brought the other creatures to Adam, right? Now he's bringing the who? The woman. She's not named Eve yet. Because Eve has a specific character, a specific name that goes with it. She doesn't. She's not named Eve until she gives birth. She's just called something else first, and there she is. That's Eve. At least the artist representation of her, right? That's what I could find. And Adam said, "This is now what? Bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be." So did Adam even name the woman? Yeah, because he had dominion over all things. Because she was taken out of the man. What was man made of again? Dust. Dust. Remember that. Remember that. Therefore shall the man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. one flesh, same heart. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. Now, we already studied that. They had clothes on. They were just naked underneath the glory of God. Now they are a pair of wonderful together, smiling, never arguing, never doubting one another, perfectly trusting in God. Everything up to this point was very good. Very good. They finished. Brought perfection. Right? Could you add anything to what God had done? No. If you did, what would it not be? Perfection. 
If you took away from anything what God had, what would it not be? Perfect. It would not be perfect, right? So if you add or track from the word of God, it would not be perfect. perfect. There's warnings in the Bible about that, and we'll see why. Adam and Eve were as? Gods. Gods. Now, that doesn't mean they were deity. But if you read Genesis 3, 5, it says that the serpent was something that you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. They were already gods. If you study that out, it means they were the children of the Most High. It does not mean deity to them. It just means what? Did they have dominion? Did Adam and Eve have dominion? Yes. Then they were as gods, knowing good. They hadn't known the evil yet. As kings, as rulers over a kingdom. a kingdom. And what is a kingdom? It is a, a dominion that is ruled by a king. That's why it says kingdom. As stewards under the Lord of Lords and King of Kings, children of the Most High. Yes, they were those who had dominion. For me again, please. The Bible says in Psalms 84, what is man, man that thou art mindful of him, the son of man that thou visitest him? Again, please. Verse 5, this is for thou, that is Jehovah, hast made him a little lower than the angels, angels but thou hast what? Crowned crown him. Crown him. If you have a crown, you are what? King. You are king, right? You have a dominion. Adam, with what? Glory. Glory and honor. For me again, please. In fact, we may just have to restart it. If you could cycle it to, to this verse, please. Go ahead, go ahead, restart it, and then recycle, please. Lord heaven, Lord, we need your help with this message. I know as I was studying, God, I know, I know, Father God, that Satan is afraid of this message. I know what it will do. Because you did it in me. I pray and ask God for your help with this message. That Satan may not interfere, God. That people may be set free from the devil, from his snares, from all the things, God, that you tempt him. Help this message, Lord God. Please, I pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Since for thou, Jehovah, hast made him a little lower than the angels and hast crowned him with glory and honor. We haven't reset yet? Please. Please reset. Thou hast made him to have what? Dominion. Dominion over the works of thy hands. And thou hast put how many things? Oh. All things under his feet. Forward me, please. And all sheep and oxen, and yea, the what? Beasts, beasts, of, the of, the field. beasts of the field. Does that include the most subtle beast of the field, the serpent? Yes. Adam had dominion over the who? Serpent. The serpent. The fowl of the air, the fish in the sea, whatsoever passes through the paths of the sea. Psalms 8, 8. Forward me again, please. Does that include the dragon then? Yes. Yes. It's a beast, right? Yes. Does that include the fiery flying serpent? Yes. He has power over all fowl, right? Fowl just means that which flies. What about the serpent? Yes. What about Leviathan that flies, uh, goes to the midst of the seas? Yeah. Did he have dominion over all those things? Yes. 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 So there you have the dragon. As fierce as it is, Adam still ruled over it. As fierce as it is, Adam still has what? Dominion. dominion. Notice, as fierce as it is, he still has what? Dominion. He still has dominion over it. As fierce as Leviathan is, as scary as it looks, as giant as it is, Adam still has what? Dominion. Doesn't matter how big it is, Adam still could say, move away, and he would have to go. Adam was given dominion over all the earth, right? Yes. Adam was formed of the dust of the ground, right? Yes. Then Adam's kingdom, his king's dominion, first began with who? Mm -hmm. And what? It says the body says God gave Adam dominion over the earth. What was Adam made of? Then he had control or rulership over his own what? He had self-control, didn't he? You see, the king's dominion begins here. It didn't begin with all the things out there. It first began with himself. If you do not have control of yourself, can you have control over anything else? No. So the first thing that God gave to Adam was what? Self-control. He was submitted to the higher king, God. As long as he was submitted to God, he would always have self-control. But the moment he submits to someone else, what did he lose? He lost the And how much would he lose? All of it. Watch this. 
His self-control as being submitted to the greater king. Adam had in the beginning when what? Image, image of God. He had self-control. Because, watch this, does Jehovah have self-control? Yes. 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 Right? And if you're made in the image of God, you too were given self-control as you submit to the greater king. So is God filled with fear or with faith and love? He's filled with faith and love. Then what was Adam filled with in the beginning? Faith and love. Was he filled with sin, Satan, and selfishness? No. 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 Does, do, does those things have dominion over God? No. No. Did they, did they have dominion over Adam in the beginning? No. No. Therefore, does God bow down to sin, Satan, or selfishness ever? No. Watch this. And the devil taketh him, Jesus, up into an exceeding high mountain and showeth him how much? Oh. All the kingdoms. Notice, it's not just physical places. It's what? The heart is the true kingdom. He showed up everything, not just the physical lands. Because what's, 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 the devil care about any of that? He wants the heart. Worship, right? He showed up all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. You can also see Luke 4 or 5 for that. And said unto him, all these things will what? I give. I give you, Jesus, if you what? Fall down. Fall down and worship me. If you just bow down to me. Now we just read. Will Jehovah bow down to sin, saint, or selfishness? No. Jesus said to them, get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, thou shalt worship the what? Lord thy, Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. This was the heart of Adam from the beginning. He could have told the devil, get behind me. I worship the Lord God. I'm not going to eat that fruit. I'm obeying God. Eve could have said to the serpent, go away from me. There it is. There it is. So what do you think God is restoring? He's restoring dominion where? In each one of us. Each one of us. Adam had the same in the beginning. For before submitting to sin, Satan, and selfishness, other cruel rulers, right? He could have said to the devil, he could have said to the serpent, he could have said to any beast of the field, go away. What happened when Adam submitted or bowed down or subjected himself to another ruler? What happened? He gave his dominion to who? Someone else. First, he had it. He was submitted to God, but then he gave it to someone else. He lost self-control. Because he lost self-control, how much did he lose? He lost control over all of his thinking, his speech, and his actions. And was to be what? Controlled Controlled by another. He was now to be ruled by what? Passions. Passions. He was no longer ruled by the logic and the commandments of God. He was now ruled by Passions. passions, which is anger, and malice, and jealousy, and envy, and sensuality, and pride, and fear. The lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. No longer without fear, no longer perfect love. Watch. Now he's like the serpent. Now he's like the serpent. The serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field. Remember, Adam had dominion over it, which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Eve should have just said, God said this, it is written, and go away from me. You know what we do? We enter into conversation with the devil just like she does. We're giving away our dominion. And there she is, talking to the serpent. The woman, a symbol of the church, entered into conversation with what? The temptation. The temptation. Isn't this what we all do? We all do this. I do this. I don't know why we do it. We just think somehow we can gamble with the temptation and somehow be victorious. You might have gone away one time. You might have won that lottery one time. You might have been victorious over entering into the temptation, but it doesn't always happen. We always lose. Though she was to be what? Rule over. over and commanded to what? Depart. Leave me. And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. For me, one more please. I don't know why he's doing this. No, I... Need to go one more. Father, help us, please. For the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it. Did God ever say, Neither shall you touch it? Did God say to Adam or Eve, Neither shall you touch it anywhere? What did she just do? She added to God's word. Didn't we just talk about adding, subtracting from that which is perfect? Check me on the spirit of prophecy on this. She added to God's word. And the serpent said unto the woman, you shall not what? Surely die. Surely die. Because the serpent was convincing her of something. She was then trying to justify her position. And so she began to add something which wasn't really there. 
For God doth know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall Now, do they have eyes that were already open? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, they can see, right? Yeah. Then what is it talking about, their eyes? Mind. Their mind, their understanding, right? The heart. Opened unto what? Because they already knew good, right? Now it will be opened unto evil. evil. Notice, you shall be as gods, because they were already God. They were already Lord. They were already having dominion. Now they're going to have what? Good and evil. And the wind woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was what? Pleasant, pleasant to the eyes, because it is. God, God makes it pleasant, right? And the tree desired. You see the words? Pleasant. Eyes. Knowledge. Desire. And she took, that is, she stole of the fruit thereof, and did eat. And gave also unto her husband with her, that's a little bit later, and he also did eat, because he entered into conversation with her. He should have told her, I'm following the Lord God. It doesn't matter what you say. If you know you're my wife, I'm following God. Adam entered into conversation with the temptation, his wife. She became the new medium, medium for the serpent. Though he was to be what? Lord. And commanded to? Depart. Get thee behind me, Satan. He wasn't trying to be cruel, but that's what he should have said to his own wife. And the eyes of them both were okay. now unto evil, right? First it was opened unto good, now it's opened unto evil. evil. And they knew that they were yeah. naked. They sewed fig leaves together and made aprons for themselves aprons. And there they are. What came upon his heart and upon his mind? Notice this. And they heard the voice of the Lord God, that's Jesus, walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife... Themselves. Why would they hide themselves? What entered into his mind now? Guilt, what else? Fear, what else? Shame, what else? Anything else? All these things, yes. Yes. Did he have any of that in there before? No. So what began to rule him? It was no longer faith. It was no longer love. It was now all these other things beginning to rule his mind because he just submitted to the devil. And that's what was ruling the devil. And Lord God called unto Adam and said, Where art thou? Where are you? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid. You see what began to rule him? If you're not submitted to God, this will rule you. And it is the cruel taskmaster. You will be afraid of anything. Everything. There are people that are afraid of sky, going outside. They're afraid of people talking to another. They're afraid of talking to their parents. They're afraid of talking to their, their pastor. They're afraid of doing things. This is what's ruling them. Because I was, and I hid myself. Adam's light what? And now it was, and would have been fear. Don't men fear the dark? Did Adam ever have fear of the dark before? No. No. Now he's only afraid of the dark. He's also, because did he come to God? No. He ran from the light. Not only is he afraid of darkness, he's also afraid of the light. He's afraid of everything. This will rule you if you do not have the dominion Jesus wants you to have. And this is the condemnation that when light has come into the world, what? Amen. They love darkness even though they're still afraid of it. They're more afraid of the light rather than the light because their deeds were evil. And everyone that doeth evil hateth the what? The light. They hate the light. They're afraid of it. Neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. reproved. That's why Adam was hiding. We do this. 4B1, please, brother. <coughs> In submitting to the devil, who was now cast out where? Yeah. Down to the ground. Adam and his wife then placed themselves in a position far below even the devil. The devil was cast from the highest place to the lowest. And when Adam who was ruled over all the earth, submitted to the devil, where did he place himself under? Mm -hmm. Under the devil who was at the lowest place. So now Adam was at the lowest place. Can you imagine that? A sinner that's servant to a sinner? And yet that's where we all were. They became sinners subject to a sinner. That is a cruel ruler if you ever saw one. Eve had been perfectly happy by her husband's side in her Eden home. But like restless modern Eves, anybody here today, she was flattered with the hope of entering a higher sphere than that which God has assigned for her. You're looking for a different dominion. In attempting to rise above her original position, she was not just fell below it, she fell far below it, underneath the devil. 
A similar result will be reached by how many? All. All who are unwilling to take up cheerfully their life duties, that is your dominion, in accordance with God's plan. So if you're not submitted to God, you're submitted to the devil, and therefore you are just where he was. Submitted to the devil. That's that Venice only. And he said, Who told thee thou was naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldst not eat? Four people more, please. Beginning to wonder if it's my battery. And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest with me, she gave me the tree, and I did eat. One more, please. It's going to be a long sermon. I hope you guys are in for it. Amen. One more, please. There we go. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. eat. Next, please. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art what? Cursed. Cursed. What? Above, above all cattle, above every beast of the field, upon thy belly shall thou go, and what? Dust. 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 Thou shalt eat all the days of thy life. Yeah. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. What? It's What is the it? The seed shall bruise thy, the serpent's, head, right? If it's going to bruise his head, then you have become what? On top of the serpent again, right? How can you get on top of his head unless you are above him? Make sense? So if the seed shall bruise thy head, Christ is going to give you what? Dominion back. Thou shalt bruise his heel, because now you're above his head. Watch. Thus through the promised seed of righteousness, Jesus Christ... Adam the first was to gain how much? All the, All the dominion back through Adam the second. Jesus Christ. Does it make sense? And there was what? War, war in heaven. Now watch this. There was war where? In, in heaven. In heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels. If you've ever read Revelation 12, 7, watch something. A battle for the kingdom of the heart. Jesus said, neither shall they say low here or low there. For what? No. Go back to the verse. There was what? War. Where's the kingdom? In the so when Lucifer falls, he prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more where. There's no more place in the heart for Satan, sin, and selfishness. Michael comes in and does what? Cast him out. No more place for fear. only love. There is no fear in love because what? Perfect love, who is? God. Cast out fear. fear. The devil. He did it in heaven. Will he not do it in your own mind and in your own heart and in your own life? Amen. If he did it in heaven, he's going to do it in your life if you let him. There's no more powerful than God. If God comes in, the devil doesn't stand a chance. The, because fear has what? So what did Adam have in the beginning when he laid underneath the devil? Torment. 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 He that feareth is not what? God is looking to perfect us, isn't he? Then what is he looking to cast out of us? Fear. He's looking to cast out the fear that has been so long holding this church back. Jesus was casting out devils in the mind. The great dragon was cast out. because he has dominion over him, right? That old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the how much? Whole world. Whole world. He was cast cast out. He'll cast you out of heaven. You know, throw the devil out into the earth, into the wilderness. It is why Jesus said that devils could be cast out where? In his name. In his name. It's talking about his character. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. freely what? Yes. You have received. You freely give it. God is giving it to us as a free gift. He's giving the dominion back, and it's going to cost us nothing except laying down the old man. And there he is. Has the devil been cast out of your life? Or is he still tormenting you with fears, with anxieties, and those things? Notice this. I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, what? Now, now, now has come salvation and strength. He's giving you strength back to live. And the kingdom, the dominion of our God. God. It's starting in here. And the power of his Christ, that's the authority, for the accuser of our brethren is Pastor. where? Not just out of heaven, in their life. He no longer had dominion over their life. The devil could no longer tell them what to do. They would say, in the name of Jesus, depart from me, and the devil would have to go. He accused them before our God day and night. Notice this. They overcame him by what? The blood. Of the blood. What is the blood? 
is his life. And by the word of their testimony. testimony, because they believed it, because they accept Jesus Christ into the life, their very testimony showed that they had dominion back. They were reigning as kings. They what? Love, Love not their life unto death. the death. That's the cross. You ever wonder why verses 7 to 11 in Revelation came after verses 1 to 6? Because it says that the woman with the crown of 12 stars, with the moon under her feet, right? She has a child in her, and then the child gives birth, and then it goes to the dragon war in heaven. You ever wonder why it was after it? Jesus hadn't been born yet, and then it comes to the war in heaven? Because it's in the proper order. It's not actually reversed. Think about this. Jesus Christ was born to Israel, right? He became the Messiah, right? He died, was resurrected, and ascended in heaven. He gave his power and authority unto who? He said, all power in heaven is given unto me. And then you could go ye therefore, right? You have the gospel. Because this, in verses 7 to 11, is merely a greater anti-type to what took place in heaven. He showed you what was taking place right then, right there, as Jesus Christ gained all power on earth. He gave it back to man. Therefore, the devil was being cast out of the minds and hearts of people as he showed them through his entire three and a half years of ministry. He's now, I'm doing it, and now I'm giving it back to you. You go do what I just did for you. It's in the right order. It's just showing you that it's in the heart and the mind now that it's taking place. The devil is totally cast out. Because through the life, death, and resurrection and ascension of Jesus, Satan is cast out of the heart, heart garden. Notice this. They said in Luke 10, 17 and 10, 18, and the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devil are, Sometimes. what a subject. The They're beneath them now, aren't they? He gave the 70 authority as kings over the devil unto us through what? Name. How are you going to get it? Through his name, through his character, through his life. If you live the life of Jesus, you have the same authority as he does. You can say to the devil, no more. I'm not listening to you anymore. I'm listening to God, my Father. He said to them, I beheld. In the same verse, I beheld what? Same. As what? He wasn't talking about way back the, the, an eons ago. He was talking about when? Right then. The devils were being cast out from heaven, the mind, right then. That's why he said, I see Satan as, as uh, falling from heaven, as lightning. They were casting out devils in his name. Guess what you can do? Every one of you here, guess what you can do? You can cast out devils in his name. You can not wait for somebody. If you're in Christ Jesus, you have the authority right now. And so he saw Satan fall from heaven, the mind and the heart. God hath not given us the spirit of? So what did he give us then? Another word for power. Remember, all power of heaven to be given to me. What, what was the power? Dominion. All authority. Authority. Dominion. All power, but of dominion, of power, of authority, and of wow. and of a. Some because mind. before we had the mind of fear, the mind of anxiety, the mind of all the stuff that Satan throws at us. But now we have something else. We now have the mind of God. And does fear rule God? No. no. What rules him? Faith and love. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty. mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Is he talking about cities? No, no. no you're the city set on a hill. you got to tear down that old Jericho and build it up. Casting down what? Imaginations. Imaginations. That false stuff that Satan loves to throw at us. And every high thing that exalts, itself. if it exalts itself, who's it from? <laughs> Isn't that right? Did he exalt himself? So if it exalts itself, it's of the devil. Against the knowledge or the knowing of God. God. And bringing the how much? Captivity. Every thought to the obedience of Christ. Because if you want to reign as kings, you cannot have an enemy reigning with you, can you? You must subdue that enemy. You must take that enemy captive and say, I rule over you. I'm the king of this land, not you. You must say to your stomach, this I submit my lord to king. The stomach is not ruling over me. You must talk about your other passions even lower. You say, this is submitted to God, not this down here. That will not rule over me. And having it a readiness to what? Revenge. Revenge how much? Disobedience. All disobedience. When your obedience is fulfilled. Let what? This mind. this mind. Talking about the mind of Christ being you, which was? Also, also in Jesus. He submitted even unto the death. And there he is. So is that mind in you? Because this is really the king of kings. What was above it? The king of the? King of the Jews. And if you're crucified, what do you have? King. If you're dead, king. 
You're ruling over all passion. It hasn't ruled you. I'm dead doing it. Through the whole Bible, God has been saying this to us since the beginning. What? Fear not. Fear not. That's what he told Adam. Don't be come. He said, do not be afraid. Always in connection with who? Emmanuel. Emmanuel. That is? Because he says, I am with thee. We don't really believe this. This is why we do what? That's why we fear so much. That's why we're afraid. That's why we're filled with anxiety. We don't really believe that God's with us. If we believe that God's with us and in us through his word, we shouldn't have fear. He has not given us the spirit of fear. He's given us the spirit of a sound mind, right? That's us. That's what we look like. And yet there's God holding our hand, looking to lift us up out of our leprosy. Yeah, that's us. He said, fear not, not, little flock, for it is your your father's father's good pleasure pleasure to make you pay for it. Mm -hmm. Make you earn it. Mm -hmm. Make you work for it. Mm -hmm. Doesn't say any of that. He's giving it to you. As a free gift. He's giving the kingdom back. A free gift of his perfect loving mercy. It shall come, even the First dominion. First dominion let Adam have. No fear, walking in perfect peace, in total harmony with his wife and with God and all creation. The kingdom shall come to the daughter of Jerusalem, talking to us. Watch this. I saw the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the ancient days. That's the Father, and there's Jesus. And they had brought, that's the angels, brought him near before the Father. Jesus is ascending. He goes before the Father for us as a man. And there was given him what? Dominion. It was given him dominion because he is the new Adam. And if you're made of earth, then shouldn't he have rulership over you and me? Yes. And the kingdom, and that all people, nations and languages, sounds like the angels' messages to me, doesn't it? Serve him. We're submitted to him. His dominion is everlasting, everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away, and his kingdom, that which shall not be destroyed. If we're not submitted, then we have the other kingdom, then that kingdom shall be destroyed. Because you can't have the two kingdoms side by side. It's one or the other. And the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven. The whole body is now submitted to Jesus. You see it? Under the kingdom, under the whole heaven. Shall be given to the people of the saints of the most high. You're going to get self-control. You won't be angry when people step on your toe. Or say something mean to you. Or when they gossip about you. You won't even care. It's like I have God. Amen. Whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and dominion shall serve and obey him. For he hath put how many things under his feet? Oh. All things are back under the feet of Jesus Christ. Today, now. You don't even have to wait for it. There it is. You see, the serpent is small compared to the lion of the tribe of Judah. It's under his feet. Is this in your life too? Who's reigning in your life? This or this? This has a hiss. This has a mighty roar. And he gave him to be the head over all things to the church. To the church. Who's ruling you? Christ the head or somebody else? There's the head. Who rules your life? Who rules your speech? Who rules your stomach? Who rules your ears, your eyes? Who rules it? Because it shall bruise my head. Because you had the mind of Satan before. And if you don't allow the seed, the serpent, excuse me, the seed Christ to crush it, you got something else ruling you. That seed Christ must bruise your head. And if you look at Calvary, you will recognize how much that weight is crushing sin in your life. You can't but help but look at Calvary and the cross and weep openly. All the head, all the thinking of the devil will be what? Crushed. Crushed. Jealousy, resentment, insecurity, negativity, negativity, anxiety, all those things. Failure, pain, tiredness, sadness, all gone. That's why in the book of Revelation it says there will be no more pain, no more suffering in the kingdom. He's crushed it in you. The layers of fear will be stripped away. Gone. If you're afraid of of living for Jesus Christ, if you're afraid of letting people know that you love Jesus, you're still under what? Layers of fear. 
You are not yet made perfect in love. Notice this. And the God of what? Peace. That's why he says, peace be with you. Peace be still. He calms the raging heart. Shall what? Bruise. Bruise. That is completely crush for how long? Uh-huh. Satan under? Repeat. Your feet. Your feet. You don't have to allow the devil ever again to ruin your life. Ever. The grace, that is the mercy of God, Lord Jesus Christ, be with you because he is with you. Amen. Now you are what? Oh. Now you are. Is what was wrong with Laodicea? They don't understand. They didn't understand. But if you understand this message, then you're full, then you're rich. And you have reigned as kings. Without us talking about Paul, they're reigning in another city. You can reign as kings right now. You don't have to wait until he returns. You don't ever have to let that fear ever again rule you. And I would to God that you did reign. I had the same. I would to God that you're reigning right now. That you're all saved and in Jesus Christ. That we might also reign with you. See what the devil hates this message? Perfect faith, which worked by perfect love is? Restored. restored. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not grievous, burdensome, or worry. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. world. You will have dominion back. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. faith. No longer fear. God hath made us kings. kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion, dominion forever and ever. Amen. Submit your selves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil. Tell him, no, I will not. And he will flee from you. It is written. Like David, you will stand before the giant Goliath and fear how much? Nothing. Nothing, because you know the Almighty God guides your heart and hand. You can't miss. Like John the Baptist, you will stand before kings unafraid because you have experienced the presence of the King of Kings. There is no higher king than him. So what if the king comes before you and say, I worship the Lord God alone. Serve him. Like Daniel, you'll be able to face the pit and the terrible lions of jealousy, doubt, and fear. Because you have known the love, the light, and the lion of the tribe of Judah. You have a greater lion. Like Jesus, you will stand before legion, all the forces of hell, unafraid. Because your hand, your heart is where? In God's. In God's. And none can take you from God's hand. It is your choice whether you want to leave or not. And if you're in the hand of God, in his hand is almighty power, all authority. No man can take you from it. Not the devil, not all the forces of hell. For the dominion of the heart and the kingdom of heaven and of Eden is restored to you in Jesus Christ. Only do you believe? Today, today, right now, you can be free from every fear, every worry, every anxiety. You can have Jesus Christ and have his peace in his heart. And if that's your wish and if that's your desire, please stand as we have our closing hymn.